I'm with Gidon Ariel, and today we're talking about Lagboma. Now, Gidon, what is Lagboma? Well, first of all, you pronounce that very nicely. <laughs> Lagboomer is perhaps one of the, is certainly one of the less known Jewish holidays in the world, and even amongst the Jews themselves. The uh, origin of Lagba Omer comes from the counting of the Omer. You hear that? Lagba Omer. And the, an Omer is a measurement of wheat or barley, which the Torah, the Bible, uh, talks about between Passover and uh, Pentecost, Shavuot. Uh, we are commanded to count every day for 50 days, seven weeks, until we get to the holiday of uh, weeks. That's why it's called uh, Pentecost, 50 days or uh, seven weeks. Now, on the 33rd day of this counting of 50 days uh, is a special day, and that is Lag Baomer. And here's another uh, deeper, quick explanation that Lag is a uh, contraction of, or an acronym of the letters Lamed and Gimel. And in Hebrew, each letter has a numerical value. Just like Aleph is the first letter, so its numerical value is one. Bet, the second, like B, so that's two, until you get to Yud, which is ten, and then Kaf, the letter after Yud, is twenty, and boof, you've got to thirty. Lamed equals thirty, the, th- the, uh, the letter Lamed, and the third letter of the alphabet, Gimel, is, of course, uh, equal to 3. So 30 plus 3 equals 33. So really what Lag Baomer is, is the 33rd day of the counting of the Omer. Mm, well. And is this a holiday in Israel? It's really one of a few children's holidays. Uh, Israel is a very child-oriented country, traditionally. And so children love Hanukkah, children love Purim, and uh, children love Lagba Omer. And as we'll talk, there are a good number of traditional activities on Lagba Omer that uh, the children love to participate in. Is it a Shabbat that people work on that day? Yes and no. It is uh, not a Shabbat in that it does not have any uh, mandated religious prohibitions as far as activities are concerned. As you alluded to on Shabbat, one is not allowed to drive, turn on lights or off. They're not allowed to light fires. On Lag Omer, it's actually almost a commandment to light a fire. (laughs) So uh, really what it is, it's a, a night out for the children and people who are children at heart. And uh, the next day, they probably sleep in. And by now, I'm pretty sure that most, if not all, schools in Israel recognize that kids stay out all night or want to stay out all night. So they give a day off anyway. Is it a religious holiday and is it a biblical holiday? Yes. As I mentioned, the source of Lagba Omer is the counting of the Omer. And by the way, it's parallel in the Bible to bringing of the Omer, bringing that measure of produce to the temple. So it ultimately starts from there. But today, we, without a temple, we have the, the, the commandment to, to continue counting. And in fact, traditional Jews count every day uh, how many days it's been since we started counting the Omer. Well, we are having this interview. Today is the 23rd, I'm sorry, the 26th day of the Omer which is three weeks and five days. That's how we count it. So when Lag Omer will come, we will say today is 33 days of the Omer, which are uh, four weeks and five days. So that is the biblical aspect of the, pro, of the, of the holiday, and, and it is a commandment to count the Omer. But the, the, um, the traditions that have come up with that of course, it's a, it's a discrepancy div- between the scholars, but uh, some say that it went back to the time of Rabbi Akiva about 2,000 years ago, and I saw that there's even really only the first time anything about Lagba Omer is mentioned is only the 13th century, 
a mere seven, eight hundred years ago. In, in, in Jewish thought, 700 years is merely 700 years. <laughs> but really, the, the, the most active development of Lag Omer has happened here in Israel um, because if there are so many Jewish holidays, uh, Jews abroad, they, they, they couldn't afford too many extra holidays. They had to go to work when you have all of Passover, all of, all of, uh, uh, of, of Tabernacles, uh, Yom, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. Your, your boss is going to say, don't you guys ever work? Yeah. So you can't really uh, say, well, today is Lag Baomer, boss. I got to take off. He said, what the? I, that's not written in, in my King James. <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, here in Israel, if there's a reason to party, we, we, we have that party. Um, the, uh, one of the traditions is that um, Rabbi Akiva it was not only... The, one of the greatest, possibly the greatest scholar in uh, in Jewish history, but he also was a tremendous nationalist, and he uh, partnered with uh, a, a general by the name of Bar Kochba, who uh, tried to lead uh, and led a Jewish revolt against the Roman Empire, and almost won. But when you're leading a revolt... Almost won means you lost. <laughs> so really, tragically, that was the, uh, the end. Uh, and it was about 100 years after the destruction of the temple. So uh, it, that was really the, 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 the terrible exile. Uh, and uh, many Jews were killed in the land of Israel. And uh, the uh, Jewish tradition in the Talmud says that, that 24,000 of Rabbi Akiva's students were killed on this day, died on this day. Uh, most people understand that uh, to be a, a more uh, perhaps ideological, theological significance. It wasn't like they were, they were uh, an atomic bomb fell on them at the same time. But uh, they say that it was because they did not uh, behave with enough respect towards one another. And so that also, the Jewish tradition leads us to be kinder, more gentle people with each other. So uh, that is uh, a, another source that is related to Lagba Omer. And that brings us to one of the, to a few of the uh, traditions, traditional activities of Lagba Omer. Um, we talked about uh, bows and arrows because of uh, Bar Kochba. Uh, he, was a, um, he was a warrior. So children used to play with bows and arrows. Today, when everybody's got their Game Boy, they don't need bows and arrows. You know, they have games ready. So that 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 uh, tradition has um, has fell a little bit by the wayside. But a tradition that by far has not fallen by the wayside, but has even grown, is the tradition of nighttime bonfires and campfires. Uh, again, I think that it has something to do with Rabbi Akiva and Bar Kochba. Because in order for them to communicate, they, they didn't have uh, smartphones back then or email. So they communicated, amongst other ways, with bonfires at night. So I think that that aspect uh, is uh, brought forth in the bonfires of uh, Lagba Omer. Another extremely important uh, image, person, that has to do with Lagba Omer is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Uh, he was, again, one of the holiest rabbis in the Talmud and, and in the Mishnah, in Jewish tradition. And uh, he died on this day, on Lag Bomer. It is, it is the anniversary of his death. And so he uh, uh, asked his family and all those who respect him to uh, honor his memory on this day. And that's why so many people go out and sing songs about him, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. He is buried not far from Tzfat, uh, on a mountain called Meron. And uh, every year on the anniversary of his death, Lag Omer, people go up and venerate him and honor him. And all night long, people are driving to Lag Omer. Buses from all over the country, over 300,000 people descend upon his uh, tomb a, in one 24-hour period. It's unbelievable. I personally have never been there. On the one hand, I, I, I'd say this is an incredible 
a, a human experience. On the other hand, 300,000 people, that is not, I mean, drive all night to get crushed. That, that sounds like, sounds like Black Friday to me. <laughs> but uh, obviously, uh, 300,000 people is uh, about uh, 20% of all of Israel's population going to one place in one night. It's really incredible. So uh, you you got the, uh, the the bonfires that people do all over the country. It's one that's why it's actually one of my least favorite holidays because I don't like fire. <laughs> and uh, and going to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's um, tomb in Meron. Those are the two biggest uh, uh, celebratory uh, ways of uh, celebrating Lag Omer. Are the special songs and prayers that I said? Um, there is a, a prayer, a, 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 a perhaps I, you might call it the Cinderella prayer of Judaism. You know, we pray in the morning about 45 minutes every day. So there's one prayer that you don't say on happy days. Um, and so everybody's wondering, is today a happy day? Maybe we don't have to say this prayer today. Uh, and so we don't say that prayer on Lag Baomer. Uh, there's, there's, like I mentioned, uh, a song that talks about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai that people, you'll hear it, I'm sure, a few times on the radio here in Israel. But it's, 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 it's not a holiday of the traditional kind that, that we traditional Jews are used to. When we have a, a holiday, then there's a whole ritual that you have to say in the, in the, in the, in the uh, prayer book. Maybe you take out the Torah and you read something. Maybe you're not allowed to, to do certain things. Here, you know, somebody says, Lag Bomer today. Okay, next. <laughs> For that, that, that is really the minimal that you should do as a, as, a, as a traditional Jew. But as I said, the kids, they're, they're, they're collecting. My, my backyard is full of wood that my kids have been collecting for months and months to burn yeah. next uh, on Lag Bomer night. I'm going to try to keep my eyes shut. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what's this uh, story about the first haircut? Okay, the I, I actually I, I should have done a little bit more research. There's a tradition that uh, I'm not really too well versed in it, even though I follow this tradition with my own cute son of not giving boys haircuts until they are three years old. I think it has to do maybe you don't want the 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 devil to to think that your boy is a boy and so if he's got long hair they think he's a girl i don't know nowadays <laughs> that's not really the but the the tradition has been to not do it only i mean if a, if a boy's birthday is uh in in december then they probably won't wait a half a year more and you certainly aren't going to do it before his third birthday but if it's some time around lag baomer then you'll push it off Till uh, Lagba Omer. So you have a lot of these um, religious Jews having a little haircut party for their, uh, for their three-year-old boy. Yeah. Eh, it, it's very cute. Remember, these boys, three years of not uh, cutting their hair, some of them are super, super cute. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's, that's a very uh, fun thing for the family to do. But uh, I haven't seen uh, a volume published yet that says... The uh, in the laws of cutting a boy's hair at three years old. It's not such a big deal. <laughs> and weddings as well are quite popular on that day. Well, as a matter of fact, you're, you're talking to somebody whose wedding anniversary is on Lag Baomer. The reason that wedding anniversaries are very uh, um, popular uh, to get married on Lag Baomer is because you're not really supposed to get married for the entire period of the Omer. As I mentioned, 24,000... Uh, students of Rabbi Akiva traditionally died during the Omer, so they say let's let's uh, not let's not be too happy. So traditionally, there are no weddings from Passover until Lagba Omer. So that's a whole month that you have to catch up. So pe- and people, believe me, when you want to get married, you don't want to push it off. And if you have to push it off a month, you want to do it the first day you can. <laughs> so that is why Lagba Omer is the most popular day of the year to to get married on it's uh, and and uh believe it or and it's and obviously it comes out very close to what non-jews 
uh, are used to, when is the best time to get married? A, a June wedding. Mm-hmm. And, and Lagba Omer usually comes out around in June season. So it's a beautiful season to get married as well. What's your prayer for Jews celebrating this time of the year? My prayer, first of all, is that minimum and preferably zero people get injured by the fires. <laughs> uh, and uh, really, the, the idea of um, that I mentioned of Rabbi Akiva's students uh, dying because they did not uh, behave with proper respect towards each other. So Lag Omer is really, the, I guess you could say, it's the holiday of fixing this mistake of of absence of respect for each other. So my prayer is, and it's not only for the Jewish people, for it's, but it's for all mankind, let us deal with each other with more respect and try to uh, give more right of way to people. Let, let them pass, and then you'll be able to pass, and we'll all be able to uh, be better people in the eyes of God and man. Okay, get on. Thank you very much. And thank you very much.